evening and warm welcome to you all for the Turtle Smart Talk series Lecture 2 Mixed Seal Surfacing Theory to Practice by Mr. Jitin Korean Andrews. Turtle Smart Solutions LLP is a civil engineering consulting firm in Kerala which has attained outstanding reputation over a small period of time. The firm concentrates in design and PMC services of amenities like roads and highways, bridges, modern slaughterhouses, sewage treatment plants, community development and town planning projects and allied sectors. The firm works with contractors by providing project management consultancy services and our laboratory services in their works and helps them improve their construction quality. The firm believes that academic industrial collaborations can impart significant contribution to engineering community. Smart Talk series is such an initiative to provide a knowledge sharing platform among engineers through interactions with eminent technocrats from academics and also industry. Today, we have our second lecture in the series organized in connotation with Association of Engineers Kerala about M. SS by an eminent academician followed by panel discussion by distinguished industry people. Now, I request Engineer R.S. Donga, Executive Engineer, Thiruvanthapuram Corporation and District President of Association of Engineers Kerala, AOEK, to deliver a few words about the association. Thank you, Mega. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of the organization Association of Engineers Kerala, I thank you all for joining us today. Association of Engineers Kerala is a non-profit organization of about 4,000 plus engineers from public works, irrigation, and local self-government departments of government of Kerala. Every year, we conduct technical sessions to update our engineers about the latest technologies. This is our second technical session of the year. On behalf of Trivandrum District Committee, I thank Turtle Smart Solutions for organizing this event and it is a great pleasure for me to be a part of this event. I express our gratitude on behalf of AOEK to uh, Engineer Sri Jidin Kurian Andrews, the speaker of the session, for sharing his valuable knowledge and experience with our engineers. And I am also thankful to our panel members for participating in this session. Today, we will discuss uh, the theory behind the technology of mixed seal surfacing and also the points to be considered during its execution. In the present scenario of heavy rainfalls, this technology is considered to be more suitable for our roads than the conventional, conventional PMC due to its moisture resilience capacity. We hope this session will be helpful for our servicing engineers as well as the students in this field. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Now I request Dr. Vivek R. Das, Associate Professor Ramaya Institute of Technology, Bangalore, and Technical Advisor to our firm to formally introduce and invite our guest speaker. So very good evening to all. So before introducing Mr. Jitin, what I want to have a brief disc discussion regarding the schedule of the program. So the program consists of two parts, part A and part B. Part B Part A is mainly related to the technical talk by Mr. Jitin, followed by a pan panel discussion under the leadership of engineer Ajit. Now, we have participants from throughout the country and even some international participants also we have invited. So with respect to this program, I just request all the participants to mute their mic and once the program is over, that is at the end of panel discussion, you can raise your queries. In between, if you have some comments, you can share in the chat box also. Now, to introduce Mr. Jidin Andrews, he is associated with Turtle Smart Solutions as a consultant for the transportation projects, and he is presently working as assistant professor in the Department of Civil Engineering. St. Gitts College of Engineering, Kota. He did his B.Tech from St. Gitts College of Engineering and Masters in Transportation Engineering from RIT, Kota. He is currently pursuing his PhD from Kerala Technological University on the topic evaluation of emulsion treated base layer in low volume roads under the guidance of 
Dr. Rubu Sakriya and Dr. Vishnu R. He has published his research work in reputable journals such as ASE, International Journal of Payment Engineering, and Indian Geotechnical Journal. He has presented papers in various international conferences and has published a patent under IPR for the development of low cost equipment for measuring payment deflection ball. He is a member of prestigious professional bodies such as IRC, RLIM, and ISTE. He has been associated with LSGD as a technical partner for the construction of the model test road project at Mohamma Alapura, which consisted of 16 innovative payment combinations. He is also working as a third party quality control officer for the projects under Rebuild Kerala Initiative. His area of interest include payment evaluation, payment design, construction of payment using innovative payment materials. He is actively involved in the laboratory studies and DPR preparation of several road construction projects in Kerala. He has received funded projects from various government agencies such as KSCSTE and CERD KTU. He has also received a funding worth rupees 18 lakhs from DST sir and is presently working as Tare Research Fellowship as an at NIT Warangal for the project title Evaluation of Emulsion Treated Base Layer in Low Volume Roads. With this brief introduction, I invite our speaker, Mr. Jidin Kurian Andrews, to deliver the talk. Thank you. So, thank you for the nice words. So, I'll just uh, present my screen now. Yes. Sir, can I just confirm that my slide is visible and my voice? Yes, clear? yes, it, it is visible. You can proceed. Okay, thank you. So uh, now I'll start the presentation regarding the technical aspects of mixed surfacing. So to start with the presentation, we should actually understand which are the different layers in a payment. As we are all are very aware about, a payment basically consists of a sub base, sub grade, a sub base layer, a base layer, and a sub surface course. And in fact. Subgrade can be a stabilized subgrade like a cement stabilized or even nanotechnology stabilized subgrades are available these days. And for sub base, we conventionally use GSB material, and now we have the practice of using even cemented sub base. For base course, the conventional practice is to use uh, the wet mix macadam, and for surface layer, we have different options. In fact, a surface layer or a bituminous layer can be consisting of a surface layer and also a binder course. And if you actually look at the IRC guideline, you have a number of options which you can choose for your own. Anyway, for time being, let us keep our discussion mostly concentrated on the combinations which are permissible for roads with traffic less than 20 MSA. Now, if you actually look at this particular slide, you can understand that for payments with traffic less than 20 MSA, IRC is permitting us to use different combinations like between us concrete, SDBC, premise carpet, MSS, surface dressing. These options are available to us. Now, we should actually understand what is the difference between these combinations. Some of them are porous, some of them are semi-dense, and some of them are dense. If you want to have a simple understanding, you can actually uh, see an image in this slide where you can see an open gradation as well as a dense gradation. So before that, let us try to understand which are the conventionally used mixes in the state of Kerala or even in India. For a high volume road, we mostly use a bituminous concrete as the surface layer and a dense bituminous macadam or a bituminous macadam as the binder course. Nowadays, we mostly prefer binder course as a dense bituminous macadam. And for a low volume road, we mostly have the practice of using uh, open graded surface mixing. And now we have slowly migrated to mixed seal surfacing. Now, even efforts are being made to use surface dressing in some of the engineering department as well. So, again, let us move on to the question whether we require an open gradation or a dense gradation. So first thing we have to understand is the conventionally used premix carpet is actually an open gradation wherein water can per percolate into the lower layers. But if you actually look at a dense layer such as the bituminous concrete, it, it, it will never permit the water to get into the surface. Now, the topic that we are discussing today is regarding the mixial surfacing. Now, we, we want to understand whether where this particular mixial surfacing stands, whether it is an open gradation or a dense gradation. 
So before that, let us try to understand the question. Do we require an open gradation or a dense gradation for low volume works? Now, if you actually look at the different liter literatures available, there are several IRC as well as uh, reputed journals on this particular topic. On the left, you can actually see a journal named Permeability Characteristics of Bitumenous Premis Carpet and Mixial Surfacing. And in this particular journal, if you actually take the second paragraph, first sentence, it is clearly written to overcome this concern of non uniformity with seal coat application. The IRC Intent Road Contest developed Mixial Surfacing in 2008. And this is a very good journal in which they are actually pointing out what are the drawbacks with the conventional practice of using a premix carpet. On the right, you can see a article written by Professor Kandal in which he is actually raising a question Is premix carpet really good for Indian roads? And he's clearly giving the answer to it. The subject question may sound strange. Unfortunately, the answer is no. So now let us try to understand how this particular mixed seal surfacing is different from the conventionally used open gridded premix carpet. As I have told at the beginning, we have different options for surface layers or bitumenous layers, but for this particular section, let us confine our discussion to the difference between open gridded surface mixing and mixial surfacing. And before moving into that, let us try to understand what a mixial surfacing is all about. So mixial surfacing are very commonly known as closed gridded premise carpet. It's a 20 mm thick wearing post on a prepared, which, which can be laid on a prepared granular or bituminous base, preferably on a low volume board. Now, again, it is composed of graded aggregates Premix with bituminous binder. This graded term is very important. We'll, we'll try to understand that later. Now, this mix has a relatively higher moisture resilience owing to its gradation, making it a suitable alternative for low volume load. Now, this is a guideline given in the mode specification for open graded premix carpet and the mixial surface. This is something which the field engineers have to understand very clearly. On the left, you can see the uh, requirement for a open gridded premix carpet corresponding to a 10 m square surface and if you look at the gradation of aggregate to be used they're actually specifying us to use only aggregates of two different sizes that is a an aggregate with normal size of 13.2 in which we have to use aggregate passing 22.4 mmc and retained on 11.2 mmc please look here that the maximum size is 22.4 and we are actually trying to make a layer of 20 mm thickness with an aggregate of size 22.4. So you can imagine if you try to densify the layer, how much density or how much aggregate bonding we can obtain out of this particular size. And again, you have to use an aggregate of size, a normal size of 11.2, in which aggregates are uh, aggregates passing 13.2 mmc and retained on 5.6 mmc have to be used. In short, the entire aggregate will be in the size of between 22.4 mm and between 5.6. There is not a single aggregate which is passing 5.6 mm. So this is the aggregate gradation that is specified open graded premix carpet. And the bitumen requirement is 14.6. Now we will actually think this is actually a very low cost mix, which we can prefer for the low volume lots in Kerala. That is true. But that has have a different perspective. Like if we can have a better mix at a cost lower than this, that would be much better. That is what a mix seal surfacing is all about. Now, on the right side, you can actually see the specification corresponding to mix seal surfacing, in which mode is giving two different combinations that is type A and type B. And type A is preferred for areas with higher rainfall, and type B is preferred for areas with lower rainfall. And again, the bitumen content, if you look, actually look at the bitumen content, for type A, the bitumen content is 22 kilogram, and for type B, it is 19 kilogram per 10 square meters. And you might wonder why type A is having more bitumen content. In fact, it is because type A is having more amount of fine aggregates. If you look at the size of 2.8 mm, in type A, it is between 14 to 38, while, it is, while in type B, it is between 5 to 25. Now, if you have a more amount of fine aggregates, you will require more bitumen content for coating the aggregate. That is the reason why if you look at a BC uh, bitumen content, it is somewhere in the range of 5.4 to 5.6 because you're having more amount of fines. So you require more amount of binder to coat the aggregates. And now again, the question is we have two gradations. How this type A and type B is different? Let us try to understand the main difference between that two. Now, before the construction of a premis carpet layer or an open graded premis carpet layer, you actually require the application of a prime coat and a tie coat. I believe uh, the many of the 
participants would be very clear about these concepts. For prime code, we actually use SS1 emulsion. And for prime tag code, we use RS1 emulsion. And these two emulsions are different, and their purpose is also different. And if you look at the guideline, they are giving us what is the dosage of uh, prime code as well as the tag code to be applied. Normally, we apply the prime code 24 hours before the construction and the tag code just before the construction. And this is a, a conventional practice of applying the prime code and the tag code. And the materials in MSS basically involves a binder as well as the aggregate. Use viscosity grade bitumen conforming to IS73, or even you can use a modified bitumen conforming to IS14, uh, 15462. And regarding the aggregates, it is mandatory that we have to use crushed rock with an aggregate impact value less than 30 percentage, Los Angeles abrasion value less than 30, 40 percentage, flickness index less than 25 percentage, and it should have a stripping value less than 5 percent. That means adhesion should be, should be more than 95 percentage and water absorption less than 1 percentage. And this is not a major concern as of now for the construction projects, especially in Kerala, because in Kerala, we're actually getting good quality aggregates. Only things we have uh, constrained for getting the aggregate, but since uh, but still the available aggregates are good quality aggregate, which can satisfy all these physical requirements. Now, as I've told you, there are two different uh, gradations available. For MSS, you have a type A and you have a type B. And type A is preferred for areas with higher rainfall in fact area area with rainfall more than 1500 preferred for areas with rainfall uh, less than 1500 mm so the question here is do we have to use type a or type b and it is very definite very clear that we have to use type a heavy rainfall Very much above 1500 mm. But now is we are mostly using samples which are being used in the site. In majority of the cases, I find that the gradation corresponds to type B. That is, I can see aggregates in between 11.2 to 13.2. If there are aggregates between 11.2 to 13.2, it means that gradation corresponds to type B. Suppose if you are using type A, that in that case, the gradation should be definitely less than 11.2. Now, we have to understand the difference between these two cases. See, we are actually trying to make a layer of 20 mm thickness. And suppose if you are trying to use aggregates between 11.2 and 13.2, you cannot actually get a dense gradation. That will again be permeable. And if you, if you are using that kind of a gradation in an area with heavy rainfall, water can penetrate into the layer and that can cause damage. So that is the reason why you are supposed to use aggregates corresponding type A in which 100% aggregate is passing 11.2 mm CU cells. In that case, you can have a comparatively better denser gradation. And so that will be suitable for areas with heavy rainfall. Now, this is an area where the field engineers will have a little bit of confusion. And the question here is how can we achieve this particular gradation at the field? Let it be type A or type B how can we achieve this particular gradation in the field that is something we have to look in detail and if you actually look at the gradation requirement for mss type a we actually uh, in in the quarry we only get aggregates in heap for a particular size say 10 mm or less and you will never find an aggregate a gradation which is exactly that closer to mss so in that case you will have to do the blending exercise and this is a screenshot of an Excel file where we do the blending exercise. And for MSS type A, we actually require three different heaps. Like we mostly require 10 mm, 6 mm, and uh, M set. Maybe the aggregate available in your uh, nearby site may not be the same, but still you can use the same practice for finding the proportion which suits uh, the uh, required gradation. And if, in this particular screenshot, you can see that uh, there is a 10 mm slot, a 6 mm slot, and M sand is given. And CU size, I have chosen the CU size corresponding to the risk requirement of MSS. For MSS, the required MSS type A, the required CU size is at 11.2, 5.6, 2.8, and 0 0.09. Suppose if I'm trying to do the blending exercise for uh, say, a bitumenous concrete or wet mix macadam, I have to choose the CU sizes accordingly. And in that case, my uh, available stockpiles also should change. This is actually 
customized only for type A MSS. So uh, the data which we have to input to this Excel is the gradation corresponding to the available uh, aggregate heaps. So uh, to find, I'll just explain how we can find this particular data. That is the aggregate gradation corresponding to a given size, say 10 mm or 6 mm. For finding the gradation, you actually have to uh, bring the material to the laboratory, or even you can chase, you can take the required CU sizes to the laboratory, to the field, and arrange the CU sizes such that you keep the maximum size on the top and the least size on the bottom. And this is actually a table which I have prepared corresponding to MSS. For MSS, the required CU sizes are 13.2, 11.2, 5.6, 2.8, 0.09, and the pad. So what I do is I take a known amount of aggregate and place it on the X, get top on which we, I have the sieve of the maximum size, then I shake it for a sufficient uh, amount of time so that my aggregates get separated to the uh, required different sieves. So once I shake this properly, I'll be able to understand what is the mass retained in each size. Say for example, in 13.2, I'm getting 200 grams. In 11.2, I'm getting 800 grams. Likewise, I'm able to find the amount of aggregate retained on each sieves. So if you actually add up these values, you will understand this. The total weight is 4 kilograms or 4,000 grams. So this is the first data I require. Then what I do is I convert that to percentage retained. For example, if 4,000 grams is my total weight, for uh, and I'm getting 200 grams retained on 13.2 uh, mm sieve size, to get the percentage return, what I have to do is 200 divided by 4,000 into 100, I'll get 5. Similarly, for 11.2, 800 by 4,000 into 100 will give me 20. So similarly, I have to find the percentage retained corresponding to each size. So I'm getting values like this. And if you want to verify whether you have done the correct process, what you have to do is you have to add up this and see whether you are getting 100. The total percentage should be 100. And the next column I require is cumulative percentage required. So for 13.2, the cumulative percentage is 5 itself. For 11.2, to get the cumulative value, I have to add up 5 with 20. So I'll get 25. For 5.6, to get the cumulative, I have to add up all these three. So 5 plus 20 plus 25, I'll get 50. For 2.8, I have to add up 35 to this. So I get 85. So finally, you will get 100% corresponding to your pan size. So this is your cumulative percentage retained. And to get the percentage passing, what you have to do is you have to minus uh, this value from 100. Like, for example, if 5% is retained, which means 95% is passing. If 25% is retained, 75% is passing. So this is the percentage passing. This is how you find the percentage passing corresponding to a given uh, heap of, say, 10 mm uh, nominal size or, uh, say, 12, 12 mm nominal size. So once you get the gradation corresponding to uh, each of your available heaps, then you will have a blending chart. I'll just quickly show how it works. Can someone just confirm whether my blending chart is uh, seen in the screen? Yes, it can be seen. Okay, okay. So to get the uh, proportion which satisfy the MSS gradation, what I have to do is I have to enter the required sieve sizes. In this case, I require 11.2, 5.6, 2.8, 0.09. If you are trying this for BC, you will have a different set of C sizes. And just as I mentioned earlier, you have to find the gradation and enter the values here. This is actually a blending chart which is available with any of you. But this particular thing is customized by the Turtle for Smart Solutions. So you can actually get this particular template from, from the website of Turtle Smart Solutions. The advantage here is once you give the uh, gradations. If you're an expert in blending, you can actually enter the values, say 5, 45, 50. Then you will get a combined gradation. Suppose like I'm, if, imagine I'm having five, 10 mm aggregates, 6 mm aggregates, then I have MSAND. If I am taking these three aggregates in the proportion, 5 is to 45 is to uh, 50, then this will be the combined gradation that I'm getting. And this column is all about the specification. Like for MSS, the lower limit for 11.2 is 100, 100. For 5.6, it is between 52 to 88. In that case, the mid limit will be 
average of these two values. To get the mid value, I have to add 52 with 88, then I'll get 70. Similarly, for 2.8 also, I'll get, I have a lower and upper. Correspondingly, I find a uh, mid limit for that. So my objective is to get a combined gradation, which is very close to this mid limit, or a value at least which is satisfying the lower limit and upper limit. So this is how you do the blending exercise. You have to find the gradation corresponding to the available material, put the values here, and put a trial proportion and do the uh, trial error method. Now imagine you are doing this for the first time. You don't know what values to enter here. What you can do is you can delete these columns and just click the uh, tab, seek system suggestion. So this is being customized in a such a way that you will get a trial value to start with. Now the system will give you a value which will satisfy the lower limit and upper limit, but that may not be the best suitable value. So once you get the value, you can do some corrections and try to get a better value which can satisfy the required uh, gradation. This is applicable for all the mixes. And now you can see the, the system itself is giving you values like for 10 mm, you choose 4.2 percentage, 6 mm, you choose 3 percentage, for M sand, 42 percentage. So now you can see that uh, the value given by the system is satisfying the limits. The combined gradation in this case is 100, 52.1, 36, 14.2. And this particular value satisfies the limits, but in fact, that may not be the best possible result. You can, now you can do a trial error and find which is the best possible result. So this is how you do the blending exercise and find the best, uh, the proportion which satisfy the MSS gradation. Now let me just go back to my presentation. Uh, my slide is visible. Can someone just confirm that? Yes, yes. Okay. So once you get the proportion, now you bring the material to the side. You take the material in such a proportion that you get the combined gradation. It is very important that you have to get the combined gradation, at, I mean the recommended gradation in the field. So once you have the done the blending exercise and find the proportion which you have to uh, use to get the required gradation, then you can just take the material accordingly, add vitamin to that, and that you get a required mix. And for the mix preparation, we have different options available. On the left, you can see a uh, batch mixing, which is used mostly for the uh, bituminous concrete. And uh, for low volume load construction, the financial aspect is, you know, is like you cannot uh, depend on a batch mixing plant for construction of small roads. In that case, you have a conventional drum mixing plant. And again, for open graded premix carpet, we use a different set of uh, drum mixes. And now recently I have seen that for mix seal surfacing, a customized uh, mixing plant is also available. This is actually an image from uh, Calicut. The engineer who has done this project is there in the panel discussion. He can explain more about this during the panel discussion session. So I'm not going into the details of that. In fact, we require a mechanical um, a machine for the preparation of this particular mix. Now, during the preparation of the mix, we have to keep certain aspects very clear. That is a mechanical mixer shall be used for the mixing process then the bitumen and the aggregate should be mixed separately. And we have to ensure that they are being properly coated and they have reached the required temperature. Only if we keep the mix, uh, preparation temperature high, you can get a higher temperature during the time of laying as well as during the time of compaction. And during the mixing process, we have to continue mixing until the mix is homogeneous and all the aggregates are properly coated with the aggregates. And this is an image from the Calicut where you are uh, heating the bitumen and the aggregate separately, and then you are proper making the uh, mix a homogeneous mix. And during the spreading process, you have to ensure that you are spreading the mix immediately after uh, mixing. Delay in the transportation uh, can cause uh, reduced temperature, which again affects the quality of construction. And suppose if there is any uneven surface that should be corrected when the mix is still hot. Now, when the mix has cooled down, and after that, if you try to make any correction, that will affect the quality of the mix. So if you want to make any correction in the mix, that should be done when the mix is hot. And again, although we recommend mechanical paver, there is a question whether it is, it is possible in the field to use a mechanical paver for laying MSS. I think this is something which we have, we have to discuss during the panel discussion. And uh, conventionally, what we say is we mostly use manual methods for uh, the spreading of the mix. 
and regarding the rolling what we have to keep is keep in mind is after the rolling we should ensure camber on the surface so if you want to ensure camber rolling should start from the edge and it should proceed to the uh, middle portion that the same same thing should happen on the both the sides and the thing is we have to do the rolling when the temperature is high we we have to ensure that we have to complete the rolling process before the temperature yeah. dropping down below 100 degrees celsius and also we have to keep the camber on the surface yeah. and while rolling the roller wheel shall be kept damp to prevent picking up the eggs and now moving to the most important part that is the quality control aspects and earlier we'll be using open grid premise carpet we are mostly concerned only about the thickness as well as the bitumen content now for mss in addition to that we have to give more concentration about the grading or the gradation of aggregates similarly as, as we follow in open grid premise carpet we have to ensure the premise carpet i mean bitumen content as well as the thickness also along with the construction temperature and for ensuring the construction temperature, these days, uh, temperature guns are available at very low uh, budget. So you can easily get a uh, temperature gun and see what is the temperature that is being uh, you know, kept during the time of uh, laying as well as compaction. Kindly ensure that the compaction is completed before the temperature drops down below 100 degrees Celsius. Another thing for ensuring the bitumen content is this uh, bitumen extraction test, where you can find what is the amount of bitumen used in the mix. Now, here there is a problem. Like, uh, I have done many bitumen extraction tests in the last few years. And whenever I ask about what is the minimum bit bitumen requirement for an MSS, there is a confusion among, among the engineers. When I try to study this matter, the problem here is in mode specification, you're actually getting bitumen content in terms of uh, kilogram that is to be used for 10 square meters. For premise carpet, it, it, it is 14.6 for MSS. A, it is 22 kilogram, and for MSS type B, it is 19 kilogram. Now, the problem here is in laboratory, when you do the extraction test, you can actually only find what is the percentage of binder in the mix. It can be 4.7, it can be 4.5. The question here is how can I compare this value with the specification? Because in the specification, it is given 14.6 kilogram, 22 kilogram, 19 kilogram. So, how can I compare my percentage with this particular value? So, what you have to understand here is this value can be compared only if we know what is the density that you achieve at the field. For example, imagine the case of MSS type A. Suppose if I'm getting a density between 2300 to 2400. In that case, if I know the density and the kilogram, I can find that that particular case, my bitumen content should be between 4.6 and 4.8. What I observe from my laboratory studies is that for MSS, you can actually achieve a density of 2,300 kilograms per m cube. So accordingly, if that is the case, your minimum bitumen requirement is 4.8 percentage. I'm not sure what value you are following. We'll have a discussion on this. But I truly uh, understand that this is based on the density that you mobilize in the field. So uh, I recommend that you should actually make an effort to find this is the density you are getting for a particular mix. And only based on that, you can actually keep a bitumen, minimum bitumen requirement for the different mixes. If you take the case of uh, premise carpet, uh, suppose if you're getting a density between 2200 to 2300, in that case, our uh, bitumen content should be between 3.2 to 3.3 percentage. For time being, we are mostly concentrated on MSS type A. From my experience, what I find is for this particular mix, you can get a density of 2300. And accordingly, you can keep a minimum bitumen requirement as 4.8 percentage by weight of mix. We'll definitely have a discussion on this matter during the panel discussion. Now, moving into the cost aspect. For premise carpet uh, with seal cord, the cost is around 192 rupees. This is without considering the cost index. For MSS manual method, it is 172. M MSS mechanical method. We're going for mechanical method. The cost is significantly reduced, but I doubt whether it is it is practically possible to use a mechanical method for laying MSS. We will have a discussion on this matter too. And again, one interesting uh, concept to be introduced here is, can we use a BC of 30 mm or 40 mm? It is definitely possible. It is possible to replace MSS with BC 30 or BC 40 mm. But the problem here is, again, the cost will go high. For BC 30 mm, the cost is 253, and BC 40 mm, 338. As you know, the reason for the higher cost is, it, it, it is very rich in fine aggregates, so it requires more bitumen content. So 
I would like to raise three questions at this point of time. One is, do you think MSS is the best option for low volume load? In my opinion, it is good if you are trying to compare with open grid premise carpet within the uh, available budget. But if you have sufficient budget, you want to have a strong layer, you should, de you should definitely think about between us concrete. Second question is, is it advisable to go for 40 mm thick MSS? I would say, if you want to go for 40 mm thickness, it is much better to go for uh, bituminous concrete itself. 30 mm BC would be much better than 40 mm thickness MSS because of many reasons. I would like to discuss these matters in subsequent. And the final qu third question is, do you think 30 mm BC is better than 40 mm MSS? I would say I strongly recommend that 30 mm BC is uh, better than 40 mm BC MSS. Now, I'll just share some of my experience with these three mixes. And you can just see the image of the carpet MSS and BC after the ITS. So um, uh, previous carpet is highly open gridded. MSS is comparatively good, but you can see BC is a denser mix, which does not uh, allow any water to permit into the surface. And for that reason, BC can give you exceptional result when compared with all other available mixes. Again, we have uh, constructed a test section at Alapura with the support of the LSD division of Alapura. In that, we have uh, actually considered 16 combinations. And I would just like to discuss about three combinations we have tried there. You can actually see the gradation corresponding to the open premise carpet, MSS, and the BC. When compared to open premise carpet, MSS is giving a better gradation. But BC is much, much better than MSS. So uh, if you compare a 40 mm BC M MSS with a 30 mm BC, I would say BC is better. Because from our experience, we have actually constructed text sections with these three different surface mixes. And you can see the images of the three sections. What we observe is that we can, can try to find the moduli of these three layers with the help of uh, falling with deflector meter given by KIF B. What we observed is a BC layer can give you at least three times higher moduli value compared with MSS or even open grid premise carpet. So, uh, on a structural perspective, you can definitely say BC is better than MSS. And even if you try to find the uh, surface riding quality using a Merlin, the BC quality is good good when compared to other two. Now, if you want to try uh, compare open grid premise carpet and MSS, definitely MSS is better than open grid premise carpet. So to conclude with my presentation, I would just like to put up four points to, to your thought. First thing is, while considering the prevailing uh, conditions and financial constraints, obviously 20 mm thick MSS is an ideal option for low volume loads. And in that case also, make sure you're going for type A and not type B. And you should be able to mobilize that particular binder content as well as aggregate gradation in the field. Second thing is, is it is extremely important to ensure the binder content and aggregate gradation and proper construction mechanism for the preparation of MSS layer. And thirdly, from the uh, experience of the from the observation that we have made 4.8 percentage by weight of total mix can be considered as a limiting value for the quality control of a bitumen uh, for minimum between requirement in mss because we are doing a lot of ex uh, exercise to uh, accomplish uh, to satisfy the quality control mechanism in terms of bitumen content and so in that case we should definitely have a clear-cut value for which an acceptance criteria should be fixed like for example if i'm I need value. I should know whether it is below or above the required value. In that case, you should, we should actually conduct some experiments and find what is the density that we could achieve at the field. And finally, if you're trying to compare 40 mm MSS with uh, a BC, I would definitely recommend 30 mm BC would be a better choice than the 40 mm uh, mixed field surfacing. So with this, I conclude my presentation. Thank you. That was a wonderful presentation from Jitin Sir. And now I request Dr. Vivek Adas to invite the respected panel for discussions. So thank you. Now it was a very nice presentation by Mr. Jitin. He has covered the three important parts of payment, mainly the design, construction, and third one is the performance. So he has explained in detail how these can be achieved in the field. Now, I am inviting eminent practicing engineers who has worked mainly in this field. 
uh, for the panel discussion. So the panel discussion is headed by engineer Ajit Kumar GS, followed by five assistant executive engineers who has worked with respect to MSS in the field. So first, let me introduce engineer Ajit Kumar GS. Sir has, has got more than 30 years of experience in the construction field and has duck positions like project director, project management unit, rebuild Kerala initiative. He is a superintendent engineer PMGSY and now he is working as superintendent engineer Thiruvanduram Corporation. With this a small introduction, I invite you, sir. Now I invite our other panel members, engineer Suraj, engineer Gopakumar, engineer Shiju Chandran, who are assistant executive engineer from LID and EW wing of government of Kerala. And I also invite engineer Rajesh and engineer Sajit from PWD government of Kerala. All these eminent persons has got more than 15 years of experience in the construction industry. Now over to you, sir, Ajit sir, you can take the session. Thank you, Vivek, and thank you all. Here, it, 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 it was a wonderful uh, session with the MSS, with the Jitin Kuryakos. Uh, here, we will uh, discuss or uh, we will uh, ex exchange our ideas or our doubts with the ex eminent and experienced engineers in the uh, departments. Here, we have a uh, limited time so that uh, the experienced the eminent engineers they will share their experience within uh, three minutes you try to uh, stick on time that uh, you have to express your experience uh, with three minutes and after that if uh, any uh, participants have doubts they can raise their uh, doubts in the chat box and uh, after the conclusion of uh, their ex experience uh, their expressions of the uh, panel uh, panel you can uh, raise your doubts okay first i invite mr suraj assistant executive engineer lad and ew to express your or uh, share your experience Thank you, sir. First of all, uh, thanks to uh, Turtle Smart LLP and engineer engineer Jidin for inviting me in this discussion about mixed seal surfacing for rural road projects. My name is Suraj. I am working as an assistant executive engineer in LSDD, Kerala. I have been in touch with MSS since 2016 when I was an assistant engineer in LSDD. Uh, that road work is still in good condition without any surface damage now. So in my experience, MSS is very cost effective and durable than ordinary chipping carpet and seal coat. Nearly, engineer uh, sir also pointed out that I think it is nearly uh, 25 rupees 25 per M square, lesser than ordinary chipping carpet ordinary premise chipping carpet but uh, some difficulties i found in my projects is uh, mss required very close supervision than other uh, other surface courses such as while doing the mss work uh, we need close supervision if quantity of uh, sand content in the mix is less than the stipulated in irc 78 the, if the quantity is, uh, quantity of uh, M sand is lesser, the mix may uh, disintegrate uh, in future. That is, uh, the layer may dis disintegrate, uh, disintegrate in future while uh, uh, traffic. Time required, uh, and also uh, one, uh, one important matter in MSS is, time required to co complete the MSS work is lesser than the OGPC. That is an important point. I uh, found in my road projects some practical difficulties others are some practical difficulties are we are facing now 
implementing the MSS project. Non-availability of cubically shaped stone aggregate as mentioned in the IRC 78. Uh, sometimes we got uh, flaky aggregates or disintegrated aggregates with uh, more dust content is, uh, uh, is the main um, problem we are facing now. Uh, IRC 78 uh, strictly stipulated that uh, the um, cubical shaped stone aggregate is uh, preferred for uh, MSS road projects. If the dust content over the wet mix macadam is more, uh, doing MSS is very difficult in, uh, in practical case. In this situation, we can see the wave action or on MSS layer while rolling. And another difficulty is stacking of properly graded aggregates are the main issue now we are facing. Because uh, we have to, uh, in, in practical case, we stack uh, 12, mm, um, 12 mm metal and 6 and M sand. In practical case, we are doing trial mix at each site uh, until we get a properly graded bituminous layer. If you are using, uh, now uh, our chief engineer uh, advised us to do, uh, uh, do the uh, MSS in Pugmil plant. So now we are using Pugmil plant for MSS work. We need to ensure the temperature of the mix, uh, mix in Pugmil portion. Otherwise, uh, other, otherwise the mix may disintegrate in while in rolling. And also, if you don't uh, ensure the temperature uh, level at uh, Pugmil, we don't get a exact rolling temperature while rolling. That is the uh, main points I noted in my uh, road projects. That's all. Thank you. OK. Next, I invite Gopa Kumar, Assistant Executive Engineer, LID. OK. Uh, good evening to one and all. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, uh, the organizers of this uh, meeting uh, to letting me to participate in this uh, such a wonderful meeting and uh, and i'm uh, very very thankful uh, to the honorable uh, faculty uh, mr jidin kuriyaku uh, sir, sir for having a wonderful section regarding the theory regarding uh, mss as a practicing engineer i think uh, i had uh, gone through some uh, implementation uh, of uh, mss in the last months and I would like to share my uh, practical experience in this regard uh, related with the theory that we have we had already briefed. Uh, as uh, as all of us uh, know, in Kerala uh, the uh, rainfall is greater than 300 centimeters, and as a result of uh, which we are uh, using uh, we are going uh, for type PA uh, MSS. Uh, type B MSS, I think, is uh, preferable to the areas uh, which is uh, less than 150 uh, centimeters of annual rainfall. So we are obviously following a type A, which is more uh, closer uh, and uh, uh, which, which is more close graded. So in the practical scenario, uh, it, uh, I think uh, my uh, fellow engineers are more curious about the uh, ratio between the aggregates. As it is detailed, uh, type A uh, MSS uh, is uh, compromising of aggregates of various sizes of 10 mm, 6 mm, and uh, of course M sand. It is a, a mix of all uh, three kinds of uh, mixes. But in my uh, uh, practical experience, I sized 6 mm and uh, uh, M sand because when I tried 10 mm, uh, if we get exactly 10 mm sized aggregates, it is uh, very good for uh, arriving the uh, gradation. But uh, when I tried uh, 10 mm uh, metal in the practical point of view, I got four uh, out of 1 kg, 450 grams were of uh, above 11.2 mm size aggregates. So uh, when we are comparing about the nominal size aggregates, I think uh, 6 mm aggregates uh, using in the practical scenario will uh, serve uh, most uh, mostly 10 mm 6 mm and under size uh, when i uh, gone for the gradation by sieve analysis uh, i tried uh, many ratios uh, between 6 mm uh, 6 mm aggregates and uh, sand 
I tried uh, the ratio one is to one, two is to one, three is to one, and uh, for even uh, four is to one also. So I got the uh, uh, reliable uh, C uh, gradation in the ratio two is to one in between two is to one and three is to one. So uh, I saw, uh, from my practical point of view, I saw uh, the ratio between two is to one and three is to one is uh, preferably followed in the uh, field uh, for achieving the gradation. If we are, we are uh, going uh, going through uh, uh, the making of mix without having any sieve analysis. Uh, of course, I suggest a sieve analysis uh, at site because uh, quarry to quarry, the particle size and the particle size distribution will vary. So uh, it is always good and preferable to go for a sieve analysis for each and every lot uh, we are uh, obtaining from a particular quarry. So if the quarry varies, it is, uh, it is preferably good to follow a sieve analysis. But however, from my uh, various experiences, uh, yet, uh, ratio between 2 is to 1 and 3 is to 1 uh, will fetch a reasonable good uh, particle size uh, distribution as uh, uh, given in the table 3 of IS-78. Uh, uh, coming to bitumen uh, 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 extraction test, uh, obviously, uh, in the previous section, it is pointed out that for type A MSS, uh, in the practical point of view, 4.8 percentage is uh, uh, reasonably good for uh, the MSS, uh, bitumen conduct. Uh, of course, I support, because from my practical experience also, the figure what I have got is uh, exactly the 4.8 percentage. So, I am also supporting that uh, the laboratory experiment that uh, 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 briefed in the previous section is exactly matching with uh, my previous uh, my practical experience at the field. So 4.8 is a reliable uh, value in the practical uh, point of view. So uh, that uh, that can be achieved. But uh, the uh, often uh, the problem we have met is uh, the engineers are uh, uh, the value that engineers is having is 22 kg per ton m square. How we can convert it into uh, percentage so there there is the problem so for that uh, conversion what i have uh, practiced is uh, by uh, ca calibrating the bulk density of the mix that i have uh, used so uh, i have tried the sample in the ratio 3 is to 1 it means 6 uh, mm metal uh, three uh, portions and a 1 mm metal one mm, sorry uh, one part uh, m sand so, so i have taken uh, 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 so by um, using that gradation, what I have see, I, I have uh, taken the weight, uh, um, find out the bulk density of the uh, mix uh, in the ratio three is to one, and I, I and I have got the its weight as one six one zero. See, one thousand six hundred and ten kg per mq was the bulk density that I have got. And on uh, going uh, through the bitumen extraction test, the value that I have, theoretical value I have got is was 4.8 on uh, 5 something, 4.8 on uh, 5 something uh, value I have got. And on doing the exact uh, the bitumen extraction, the value was uh, 4.8 percentage. So 4.8 percentage is a reasonable uh, value in the practical point of view. Also, that uh, that was my uh, practical experience. Uh, uh, but uh, at the same time, I would like to, uh, 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 I would like to ask a question regarding the uh, tolerance uh, of bitumen conduct. Is there any tolerance is uh, available uh, for uh, bituminous uh, uh, ex extraction? See, is it exactly meeting 4.8 percentage is uh, practically, I don't think it is uh, practically uh, possible. So, if there is a tolerance uh, with uh, plus or minus 0.3 or uh, so, I don't know exactly, but uh, when I am doing BM and BC while uh, working in a uh, national highway, I remember that there was a tolerance of plus or minus 0.3 uh, for BM and BC. So, uh, also uh, curious to know, is there any tolerance uh, for bitumen content is there? So, that's all. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Th thank you, Gobomar. There are there are many queries are coming uh, that we will discuss after panel discussion. Uh, now I invite Shiju Chandran, Assistant Executive Engineer, LADNDW, 
in this discussion. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And thanks for Jidin also for such a good presentation. Uh, regarding the uh, regarding the experience uh, I'm having uh, in implementation of MSS, uh, like uh, Suraj, I also have started implementing MSS in SGD uh, from around 2017 onwards. And also I continued the practice uh, for uh, uh, four or five years from that point. So execution wise, uh, there was much, there was not much problems, but uh, the issue was only the one that Gobagumar sir has mentioned, uh, the NMAs that we are using. Uh, we have the practice uh, of using uh, 11 mm aggregates in MSS to ensure the thickness uh, or, 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 or ensure the density or something. So that was the only issue that I used to find in field. Otherwise, uh, if the gradations are made paka, uh, we only require what is available from quarry, the 6mm, uh, the 4mm and the MSAN will be enough for a comfortable MSS mix. And regarding performance, as uh, like Suraj told, it was excellent. It was much, much better than the conventional PMC uh, surfacing. So uh, I have even uh, the condition of the roads, which was implemented in uh, implemented from 2017, is performing good uh, even in difficult drainage conditions. And also, I had tried uh, some sections in uh, cold mix also in MSS, and that those roads are also uh, performing much better. Uh, than conventional MSS roads. So the experience is fine. I think uh, the rest of the thing uh, after uh, attending the queries and uh, in the discussion, we can share. Thank you. Thank you, Ajis. Thank you, Shiju. Now I invite Rajesh, Assistant Executive Engineer, PWD, to share his experience. Thank you, sir. First of all, thank you for uh, Engineer Jitin Kurian uh, for this wonderful session. Let me introduce first time uh, Rajesh RR PWD as a engineer. Although I am currently working in PWD buildings, uh, the last two years I have been in uh, PWD road swing. Uh, in uh, comparatively low traffic roads, uh, what PWD currently uh, doing is uh, open grade premiums because. Uh, uh, this is a process that uh, has been uh, going for, uh, I think, ages. Now, time has been changed and uh, technology has changed. We are uh, switching to uh, BM and BC roads. Uh, we all know uh, that uh, cost occurred for BM and BC roads. Uh, uh, it is uh, at this stage, uh, there is a technology uh, that is not much expensive as that of BM and BC and better. Uh, than that of conventional open grader premix. Uh, that is mixing surfacing uh, or closed grader premix. Uh, now, now I am coming to the point. Actually, we use uh, MSS in PWD work. Uh, uh, actually, the uh, use of MSS in PWD work is very less. Uh, we are uh, currently using it in our uh, running contract works only. Uh, it is. Uh, being done very well uh, by our road maintenance ring. Uh, what I want to say uh, is about the problem that our engineer is facing uh, during the field work. Uh, we uh, all know that uh, the mixing surface uh, must be a void free surface. Uh, how it is possible? In our presentation, engineer Jidan Kurian uh, has discussed. Uh, uh, as the, uh, described about the gradation of the agree. Uh, the main problem we are facing is that uh, we are not uh, getting the aggregate with proper gradation. Uh, if the aggregate uh, at the correct gradation is not obtained, then the cross graded uh, property cannot be achieved. We know that. So uh, we should try to stack the aggregate uh, with the correct gradation. Um, in, a, in in the field, in, in the field, we should uh, 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 we are getting uh, the 
aggregates of uh, 12 mm 9 mm 6 mm like that in uh, our uh, in our experience uh, in our experience and trial uh, we are uh, uh, practicing with the uh, 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 44% is 9 mm metal and uh, uh, 26% is 6 mm metal and for uh, around uh, sorry uh, 30% is 9 mm uh, 44% uh, is 6 mm 26% is 9 mm plus dust we are uh, now practicing like that uh, uh, like that uh, 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 in such a mix uh, we get uh, an, an even uh, MSS mix uh, also it is uh, very uh, important is the rolling temperature a digital thermometer is very essential for the engineers and our uh, it is care should be taken not uh, not to let the temperature drop during laying before one for uh, below 140 degrees celsius and uh, during rolling uh, below 90 degrees celsius rolling must be completed before the mix cool to the minimum 90 degrees celsius also the the bitumen extraction bitumen extraction is also uh, very essential at that side i i suggest that contractor should be asked uh, to supply the bitumen extractor uh, testing machine at, at site the uh, during the uh, uh, presentation and the uh, mr jidin uh, kurian uh, told about the Uh, the uh, percentage of bitumen and the uh, 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 government also asked about the uh, um, uh, the uh, the uh, tolerance uh, tolerance limit. Uh, our uh, um, uh, uh, quality control wing uh, suggests that uh, the percentage of bitumen. Uh, we should follow is 4.57 to 5.15 percentage that is uh, yeah. i think uh, they have conducted an uh, experience in our quality control being at the uh, khri uh, uh, also i uh, and i'm also uh, it's, it's telling one thing also uh, in in water traffic areas uh, we are planning to provide a uh, 40 mm cross gear premix and uh, the analysis has already been prepared and submitted to uh, chief technical examiner for approval engineer uh, sajit and me are in the group uh, uh, sajit will explain it in uh, detail i think uh, my allotted uh, time is up uh, there are other panelists to talk about let me conclude thank you Thank you, Rajesh. Now I invite Mr. Sajid, Assistant Executive Engineer, PWD2, to uh, talk about uh, his experience. Thank you, sir. I am Sajid, uh, Assistant Executive Engineer, PWD, currently working as uh, road subdivision Nadavangad. In Kerala, around 30,000 kilometer road is maintained by PWD. Uh, the present policy of our government is at least 50 percentage of That means 15,000 uh, 15, km road has to be developed to BMBC standards. That means PWD is not promoting MSS widely. They are trying to make all the roads in BMBC, the BMBC standard. But now in uh, running contract works, PWD has also started to use MSS uh, in maintenance works. But uh, at site, we are facing some difficulties in Uh, in the execution of MSS, first one is track measurement. Uh, we know uh, in the case of uh, chipping carpet, we have to track the required materials at site. But in but in the case of MSS, track measurement is not mandatory. It causes some confusion in in ensuring the gradation as well as required quality of materials at site. Another thing is uh, the, the compaction. 
compaction means in the case of uh, open carpet carpet we had two layer compaction that is a chipping carpet as well as uh, finally seal coat but in the case of mss we need only one layer compaction so if, so it need a keen super pressure to ensure the compaction as well as its thickness another point is uh, usage of vitamin uh, paver and that uh, drum type or bash type mixes uh, especially for small budget works it is very difficult or uh, it's less possible to ensure the use of pavers and plant standardized plant for small budget works then another point is uh, uh, you know in the case of mss we need at least 4.8 percentage of bitumen content but at site we never get to 4.8 percentage during uh, bitumen extraction if uh, we have why we got this 4.8 percent we have to uh, increase the percentage of fine material like m sand if the m sand content is more we can uh, we can attain this much percentage of bitumen while uh, conducting with the extraction Extraction tested site, but uh, it finally uh, uh, the final problem is uh, the usage of this uh, fine material may lead to cracks and segregation. Then, even though uh, is, uh, the uh, percentage vitamin in the case of MS is nearest to BC, so through proper supervision and uh, pro usage of uh, proper gradation of proper graded materials as well as usage of bitumen conduct we can ensure a durable bitumen surface in mss which is minimum cost thank you okay thank you all uh, mr didin uh, before concluding i have a doubt last sajid what uh, what sajid told if the fine aggregate is more, then only we will get fine sand is uh, sand sand content is more, then only we will achieve 4.8 percentage. But Govomar said uh, they are get they are getting correct 4.8. Uh, what is the uh, what uh, what is the factor affecting the content of uh, the bitumen content? Whether it is depends on fine material or does it depends on uh, coarse material? Will you please explain? sure sir so it, it basically depends on the density now if you have sufficient amount of fine aggregates your density will increase so in short it is actually a function of your gradation or a function of density so you cannot just specify a particular value it, it should be actually a range of value depending on what density you can mobilize in the field accordingly you should give a range of value for which the bitumen content should satisfy but i believe one of the expert was saying that they have a quality wing value of 4.7 to 5.1 i think that is a very liberal value which the contractors can satisfy because you are getting aggregates of different gradation the fine control will be different so the density you are achieving will also be different yes. so accordingly you should have a range i think that is a correct practice of uh, 4.7 to 5.1 that is actually a genuine value it seems okay okay thank you let us move to uh, doubt clearing session there now, are so many queries yes so first I call Mr. Someshir Rao. Sir, you can unmute and uh, raise your queries. Sir, good evening, sir. Thank you. Yes. Opportunity. Yes, sir. Uh, I am from uh, Andhra Pradesh. OK, sir, please. Uh, okay. uh, prior to 2015, we exited type 2B, MSS, 25 mm thickness. Type B. MSS type. Da, da, da. And, uh, and uh, it is uh, the surface is still intact. Where we have a rainfall range of more than thousand mm. But still uh, we have we have good surface now. Lightly worn out yeah, the surface is good. Surface is good in uh, MSS type B. Uh, when we are using OGPC, it is not uh, that much good, in my opinion. Okay. It is 25 mm, sir. Uh, okay, okay. Fine. 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 Thank, thank you, sir. Th thank you, thank you, thank you. 
now what i'll do is i'll read out some of the questions which has come from chat box first one was from ujjwal solanki so the question is is there is a need of base course like bm or dbm for mss laying what would be the ideal thickness for mss for type a and type b for low volume rooms jitin sir i have a question yes okay the first question was is there a need for a base course uh, actually there is no need for a bm or dbm base course <clears throat> you can directly lay the mss or the uh, wet mix macadam layer if you have the luxury of going for bm or dbm you can definitely think of a bc no need to think about mss and the second question is regarding thickness the recommended thickness is 20 mm for both type a and type b but as uh, someshwar rao was our point here they are using 25 mm but in fact the recommended uh, thickness is 20 mm okay same question has been uh, uh, one more question has been arrested from same person that is can we use recycle aggregate available by milling in mss is there any quality difference in machine mix and manual mixing please guide what is good i think we don't have much experience with using recycling aggregates for uh, mss but still i believe uh, it can be used in mss recycled aggregates can be used in mss provided it satisfy the requirements for a hot recycling in case of hot recycling we have to choose the binder accordingly and also we have to choose the amount of wrap such that we satisfy the recommended gradation so if you can have a check over the required gradation as well as the uh, binder activity we can definitely use recycled aggregates for mss now another question from agilesh mk how to achieve proper gradation in sites of smaller projects like patchworks where in blending charts and all cannot be practically prepared is there any nominal ratio to begin with for mixing various aggregates uh, i don't think there is a nominal ratio to start with but in fact using a blending chart is very simple process like a ready made excel sheet is available with you even you can use that in your phone only thing is you have to have a gradation now the problem with having a nominal ratio is the gradation of aggregate that you getting at different locations different so you can have a nominal ratio like that okay now i think yes. uh, say uh, agilesh mk he has raised his hand sir you can uh, yes. unmute and uh, talk to panel members yeah good evening everyone uh, so, uh, why i am insisting on uh, you know on a nominal mix uh, proportion is because um as uh, engineers from pwd rightfully said uh, in pwd uh, actually uh, considering the uh, heavy traffic load heavy msis bc um, bc overlays are generally promoted here so we use this mss uh, just for uh, doing patchworks just for doing patchworks just for making the existing chipping carpet roads trafficable in that sense only in P- at least in pwd nowadays uh, mss is uh being used uh so in such works wherein we are not using uh, mss uh, for a overlay work or something um we may be it, it may be a work of like 5 lakhs rupees and, uh, and the morning they'll be they'll be you know the source of material can itself change uh, the morning loads will be coming from one quarry and in the evening uh, the loads will be coming from another quarry so even the source of material can itself change from one place to another so in such uh, works of very nominal you know very very minimal uh, project uh, cost uh, if we can begin with at least we will not be able to properly achieve that gradation within the limits that we know but then still to begin with if we have a you know a nominal if we have a normal ratio which already the various uh, practical engineers have discussed over here um it, that will be quite uh, comfortable for working engineers to start with there is one more question on uh, that aspect earlier uh, during the panel discussion itself uh, someone told that uh, um, aggregates we can use only 6 mm and crusher dust uh, for even for type a also Uh, we can use six uh, mm and uh, crusher dust. Is it rightful to use just do just two of them? Because even for type A, also this uh, gradation says that gradation as per the Morth says that at least eighty eight percentage should be passing through. So twelve uh, percentage. You know, if we reinterpret in this way, twelve percentage should uh, retain in eleven uh, mm sieve. So 
uh, is it rightful to use uh, even for type a uh, mixer mixer surface seal coat is it rightful to use only 6 mm and crusher dust uh, and even if we, we are using 6 mm and crusher dust uh, the working engineers find it pretty difficult to achieve this uh, thickness actually uh, it may be you know more compacted and uh, it may be you know more uh, more conforming to gradation even if it is not pro properly graded it may be more conforming to the uh, gradation given but still uh, this um, uh, if, if we completely avoid nanomer mater material nanomer aggregates uh, um, uh, we find it very difficult to achieve the thickness in uh, uh, practical situations and uh, one more thing sir i i want to uh, I'm, I'm asking to jidan sir uh, regarding this uh, is there any provisions uh, is there any caudal provisions uh, regarding the maximum dry the density that we can achieve through uh, mss no as of now there That's is no discussion regarding the density requirement only thing is you have to yeah. uh, get the binder binder content and the gradation satisfied there is no specification for density as of now but i think that is something which we have to our quality wing has to ensure okay uh, yeah, i think uh, the, rema the remaining questions uh, can i answer mr vivek yeah, yeah sure yes you can you can go um uh, 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 uh one thing uh, what uh, gobakumar sir said about mixing uh, 6mm and uh, for a mum, so it was uh, in some places we used to get six mm aggregates, uh, which is having oversized particles, and in that way, it usually satisfies uh, what the 10 mm aggregate will satisfy. Because what uh, he saying, if you use 10 mm aggregates, uh, are normally rare in most of the quarries. So what we get is uh, what they say it is 6mm and that 6mm will have particles which satisfy that 100 to 88 uh, criteria that we that in, it, it normally satisfies in such case only we can use uh, the nominal 6mm aggregate uh, 4mm aggregate and m sign for this uh, regarding uh, fixing a, a nominal or a starting mix i don't think it is a good practice because uh, from area to area your gradations will vary and you are saying that even in a particular site uh, the materials are coming from different quarries but from our practical experience we know that there may be five to six quarries at a particular place so it is always better and it is always good to have a trial proportion in your area you, you in, 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 in you may be working in a in particular area so by conducting one or two trials or or, or four or four, five trials in your area you will have a clear picture of as to what gradation is better to be used so uh, without uh, it's not uh, fair to go for a, 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 a what is called a presumptive proportion or something like that even that proportion has to be arrived at case to case by the implementing engineer now uh, another question from ujjwal solangi that is can it use in overlay designing or bc No, it is not recommended for overlay a design above BC. Uh, maybe it can be used above uh, previous carpet. For a, uh, overlay above BC, it is recommended to use BC gradation itself because BC is already a dense gradation. So it is advised to use a BC overlay over an existing BC surface, not okay. an MSS overlay. Okay. Now, another question from Anjit B. Mohan is comparing to OGPC with seal coat, that is, with Combined stone aggregate requirement as per data is 0 0.3 meter cube per 10 meter square. What shall be the loose thickness of MSS type A in brackets with comparatively smaller stone aggregates requirement as per data? So I think you can just go through that chat because it is a big sentence. No, I think he is actually asking about the loose thickness that is required for MSS. As okay. for my understanding, the loose thickness required is 27 mm. We have to put a loose thickness of 27 mm and compact that to 20 mm. The field engineers can correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, it's true. Uh, it's true. It's 27 to it, it, it is in, the, in irrespective of whether it is type A or it is type B. And irrespective of uh, whether it is MSS or PMC, your loose thickness uh, for a functional layer, these two, PMC and uh, 
MSS, the loose thickness is 27 and the compacted thickness is 20. Okay. Now it is a question okay. from uh, Vishnuvar to Ujjal Solangi, I think so. So Ujjal sir. Uh, you are answering that sir. Okay, okay, fine. You are answering the question to Ujjal sir. Okay, okay, fine, 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 fine. If any other question is there, you can raise your hand or put in chat box. I think uh, there is no other uh, questions from the audience also. Uh, with this, what I feel is, Ajit Kumar sir, can we end the session? Okay, okay. We can okay. End, end the section. Thank you all. Okay. Thank you, Vivek sir. Thank okay. you. So, Thank you. so I invite Engineer Deepti to give a word of thanks. Good evening, everyone. Myself, Deepti, District Secretary, Tiruvannaburam Chapter. Hope you can hear me. Yes, yes, please, madam. Okay. So, it was a wonderful session. It gives an immense pleasure for me to deliver the vote of thanks for the technical session, which had more than 160 participants. Um, uh, it is... Um, uh, the number of participants, participants itself explains the importance and the relevance of the subject. First of all, on behalf of the Association of Engineers, I would like to thank Turtle Smart Solutions for uh, conducting this second session for, uh, for us on MSS. Also, I would like to thank Dr. Vivek Ardas to deliver such a detailed introduction. Um, also, the most uh, next uh, most important person of the session uh, the speaker of the session, Sri Jitin Kurian Andrews, as uh, Assistant Professor, saying it's College of Engineering for such an under outstanding, uh, outstanding detailed presentation on mixed seal surfacing. Thank you, sir. Also, I would like to thank all the panel members, um, uh, Engineer Rajit sir, Gobumar sir, uh, Shiju Chandran sir, Rajesh sir, Sajit sir, and all uh, who participated in this session and shared their practical experience and to mention the practical problems while executing MSS, which integrated the theory as well as the practical experiences, uh, which made the session a spectacular one. And um, also, I would like to thank all the uh, all the members uh, of the um, of our engineers of association. Uh, last but not the least, I would uh, I would like to thank all the engineers who participated in this session and all the members of Association of Engineers Kerala, Thiruvannaburan District. Thanking you all. Have a nice day. Good night. Thank you. And uh, Thank good, you. Night. Good, night. Thank you. good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night.